Gone with the Wind. Gone with the Wind has been removed from HBO Max. I talked about that yesterday in a video, but I also said that I want to be fair to the movie. I wanted to watch the movie because I had never seen the movie. And I said that I would actually watch the movie. Now, I was actually planning on going live yesterday evening, but then I decided, you know what? Let me go ahead. Let me watch the movie. And do a video on it. And I think that was kind of the right thing to do, because the mainstream media is now is talking about how it needs to be removed. It needs to be taken away. And HBO Max is pretty much just taking it away, even though they're going to actually put it back on. So I think that what they're saying was they were actually going to end up removing some scenes out of the movie, re-editing them so it doesn't have these racial stereotypes in the movie. That's what I'm thinking that they're going to do. Now, I would much, much rather watch a movie in its original form. I don't think the movie should be changed. You know, remember, this is a Civil War movie. So the treatment of black people during the Civil War times wasn't that great. Yes, there was slavery. There was racial discrimination, you know, not just in the Confederacy, but also in the Union. Let's not forget that, too. Let's not make it seem like the Union was all for equality and everything like that. No, they weren't. I mean, they had segregate, segregated troops. They had black regiments. They weren't allowed to actually serve right alongside the white ones. Let's not get history twisted. But anyway, watching this movie, the main controversy of this movie is the treatment and portrayal of slaves in the movie. Now, watching the movie, I do think that the portrayal of slaves were a bit over the top. You know, the way they were talking, um, the way they were all very, very subservient to their white slave master, slave masters. Yeah, it's probably a bit over the top. I mean, you even had a whole entire regiment of black people going to fight the union. And one of them actually said in the movie, don't worry, you know, we're going to, you know, stop the Yankees and push them back or whatever. OK. I don't know if that was historically accurate or not. It could have been, but we do know that there was actually black people serving alongside the Confederacy in the Civil War. And most likely it was probably just the the slaves standing fighting alongside their slave masters. That's the way it could have been. I'm not really sure. So I digress. But you have to take the movie in context. The movie was made in the 1930s. And it takes place during the Civil War. So you're not going to see see fair treatment across the board for black Americans in the movie. You're not. And I do believe that one of the scenes that they're probably going to try to take out this one slave says that she is good at uh, giving childbirth, helping out with childbirth and that she can do a great job at it. And Scholar Harris says, all right, come help me. And then when it comes time, she says that she's never done it. She lied. Scholar Hera takes her hand. She slaps her across the face because her friend is upstairs about to give birth and she's dying. So that'll probably be a scene that they probably will remove from the movie. And this one black slave, you know, she was kind of weird. She was always walking around singing and talking to herself. It's kind of weird. I can actually see them probably removing that. But I've seen much worse before. Birth of the Nation is much more racist than this movie. It just is. Also, when it comes to the brutality of slavery, we've seen other movies way worse than this. Now, in Gone with the Wind, nobody dropped the N-word. Nobody was whipping slaves. Um, we've seen way worse. You know, 12 Years a Slave comes to mind. I can't remember how many times. They were dropping the N-word in that. Also, Michael Fassbender as Edwin Elps was a brutal slave owner. We saw him whipping slaves. It was way worse than anything that happened in Gone with the Wind. Now, of course, the acting is quite different than what happened in Gone with the Wind. I mean, even 
even across the board, you know, you realize it's very hard to compare a movie that was made in 1939 to a movie that was made. I believe that 12 years of slave came out in 2012, if I'm not mistaken. But also one of the other problems that they said it was glorifying the South during the civil war. Now you got to remember the movie is taken from people that live in the South. The movie takes place in Georgia. It takes place in Atlanta. This is the way they experienced the civil war. They actually thought that the union was coming to take away everything they had. And of course, you know, that did happen. There's even a scene in the movie where you see Scarlett O'Hara. She's out there in the, in the cotton fields, picking cotton with other people. And we know that that actually happened because also remember many series called Queen based on Alex Haley's, uh, I think it was his grandmother, where that was also a Civil War era miniseries as well. And yes, the white plantation owners after the war, they were out in the fields. They were working. They were complaining about it, too. They didn't like it. Now, like I said, no N words are dropped in this movie. Now, they did refer to black people as darkies. Now, even the union, let's not get it twisted. They were using N word too. They weren't all for equality as well. I mean, if you look at Glory, Glory is about the first all black regiment for the union during the Civil War. They weren't for equality because they weren't allowed to serve with white people. They weren't. They didn't have shoes and socks. One of the scenes in the movie is about them trying to get shoes and socks. And they kept getting a runaround from higher ups in the Union Army. So they weren't all for equality either. They weren't. And even during the Civil War, you also had what they call border states. These were states that never left the Union. They stayed with the Union and they had slavery. They did. It was like five states. They still had slavery. They were allowed to keep their slaves up until slavery ended. So let's not have revisionist, revisionist history thinking that only the South had slaves. They didn't. It was other Union states, too. Not all the Union states, but there were states that did have slavery. Let's be honest. But overall, the movie, really, when you look at it, it's not really it's more about, you know, Scarlett O'Hara and her scheming ways that she does things through her life. The movie is really about her trying to get this man, Ash, who she's been in love with forever. To leave his wife. And she tries through all of these years to. Get him to leave his wife and he never does. I mean, she would marry guys just to try to make him jealous and it never works. And Clark Gable's character, Rhett Butler, he comes into to the picture. He's in love with Scarlett O'Hara. They have a baby together, but she never truly loves him in return. Everything she does is to get Ash to leave his wife. And it never pays off. And at the end of the movie, when when Ash's wife is dying and Ash's wife is pretty much Scarlett O'Hara's best friend. Scarlett O'Hara basically tries to tell Rhett Butler that, oh, I love you. I love you. When she realizes that Ash was not in love with her. And Rhett Butler, after all these years, he's like, I'm out of here. I'm done. So he walks out and Scarlett O'Hara is trying to get him to come back. And she's saying that she loves him. He's not falling for that game anymore. And then he drops the one of the best lines I think I've heard in movie history. She says something like she she loves him. Don't leave. And he's standing out the door and he says, frankly, honey, I don't give a damn. And he walks out. Mic drop moment. So overall, was it a good movie? Yeah, it was a good movie. I just don't see how it was the best movie of all time. Like some people said, um, racial undertones. You got to take it for when this movie was made. It was made in the 1930s. It was set in the Civil War. That's just the way it was. But I've seen more brutal treatment of slavery in other modern movies, other modern movies. HBO Max definitely should have not taken this movie off the platform. It has historical significance when it comes to film history. It does. 
This is the highest grossing movie of all time when you account for inflation. The movie is made over 3.5 billion. Not even the original Star Wars made that money. I believe the original Star Wars, when you account for inflation, made 3 billion. Gone with the Wind is cinematic history. You know, for that reason, if just for that reason alone. And also, had him at Daniel, the first black woman to win an Oscar. And with HBO Max pulling off the platform, probably do some editorial stuff. They're probably going to end up taking some of her scenes away. And that's going to be unfortunate. You know, her hard, hard work, her le legacy could be diminished if HBO Max and other platforms take away those scenes. But anyway, guys, that's just my thoughts on this. What do you guys think of this? Gone with the Wind. Have you seen it? Do you agree with my assessment or do you not? So guys, let me know what you think about all this in the comments. If you're new here to the channel, please hit subscribe to catch future videos from me and we will catch you on the next video. John Matrix out.